Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. And in today's episode, we'll be talking all about the summer nighttime sky, the stars, planets, constellations, and other things to look for as you head outside and look up this summer. If you're just starting to get to know the night sky, a great place to start in the summertime is a grouping of three stars that you can easily see even from light polluted city skies. In late June, these stars will be visible in the east about an hour after sunset, and by late August, they'll be high overhead by the time the sky gets dark. This is the Summer Triangle. Each one of the bright stars is part of a different constellation, but together they form this bright, eye-catching pattern. The brightest of the three stars, Vega, is the fourth brightest star in the nighttime sky, and the third brightest visible from mid-northern latitudes. The name Vega comes from Arabic, meaning eagle or vulture. It's part of the constellation Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, and indeed it's often shown as an eagle holding a harp. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation Cygnus the Swan. It marks the tail of the swan, and you can imagine looking up at a swan in flight, with Deneb as the tail, two wings outstretched, and a long neck leading to the head of the swan. Although Deneb is much dimmer than Vega in our sky, it also lies about a hundred times farther away, about 2,600 light years distant. Deneb is about 5,000 times brighter than Vega, but because of its distance, it appears a bit dimmer. And the third star in the Summer Triangle is Altair, and it marks the eagle, Aquila. Turning our gaze to the south, we have a chance to see two classic zodiac constellations, Scorpius and Sagittarius. These two never get very high in the sky as seen from mid-northern latitudes, but they're bright enough and recognizable enough to spot and identify even from light polluted skies. The easiest of the stars to spot is Antares, which marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Antares is quite bright and a lovely reddish-orange color, indicating it's cooler than some of the blue or the white stars that we see elsewhere. It more than makes up for that though, as it's a red supergiant, much larger than our sun. It's so huge that if it were placed in our solar system, it would swallow up all the planets out to Mars. So if we take Antares as the heart of the scorpion, you can then imagine the claws extending to the right or the west, and then a long tail with a stinger at the end. Right next door and slightly east from Antares is Sagittarius the Archer. The most recognizable portion of this constellation is the asterism known as the teapot. The teapot though is a relatively small section of the full constellation, which shows a centaur archer, half human, half horse, with the teapot marking the bow and arrow. If you have a chance this summer to travel to a dark sky on a moonless night, make sure you stay up and take in the view of the summertime Milky Way. Scorpius and Sagittarius frame a beautiful part of the Milky Way galaxy in the south during the summer months. I like to imagine the beautiful band of the Milky Way as the steam coming out of the spout of the teapot in Sagittarius and rising up across the sky. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's a majestic view. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time for viewing the Milky Way because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. You can see a different part of the Milky Way in the Northern winter, but it isn't nearly as bright in the sky. The Milky Way, this band of hazy light, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but we see most of the stars along that band of light, the plane of the Milky Way. The center of our galaxy lies in the direction of Sagittarius, just off the spout of the teapot. This is the location of the supermassive black hole that was imaged by the Event Horizon Telescope. The summertime Milky Way, especially the part just above Sagittarius and through the Summer Triangle, holds some amazing treasures to view with binoculars or a telescope. Areas that appear as brighter smudges to the naked eye start to show up as clusters and nebulae with some magnification. Well, many of the things we've talked about so far remain the same from one summer to the next, but there are also parts of the sky that change from night to night, like the moon and the planets. The planet Venus has been putting on quite a show in the evening sky this year, and it continues to do so throughout much of the month of July before it becomes visible in the morning sky in August. Venus will be by far the brightest point of light in the sky and visible in the west even before the sun has set if you know just where to look. You can see its motion as it moves in its orbit more and more in between the Earth and Sun, so every night you'll see it a little bit lower in the sky. 
A small telescope will also show you a beautiful crescent phase. The planet Mars, much farther away from Earth currently, is also much dimmer in the sky, but it can reliably be found to the upper left of Venus through the middle part of July. Occasionally joining these two in the sky will be the crescent moon, making a beautiful grouping with the planetary pairing. On the first day of summer, June 21st, you'll see the beautiful crescent moon shining right near Venus, with much dimmer Mars shining to the left of the pair. A month later, on June 19th and 20th, the planet Mercury has joined the picture, though the whole group by then is much lower in the sky at dusk and will be harder to see. So I hope you have a chance this summer to get out there and see all the things the summer night sky has to offer. That's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.